I'll promise to smack out every chance I get. Oh, come on. Hey, I am Adria. I am a viewer of TikTok, unfortunately. I'm not one of those people that somehow thinks I'm above watching TikTok and then just watches them two weeks later on Reels. Oh. We all know those people. They need to stop. So anyways, today we are going to be reacting to some uh, crazy, cringy TikToks, and we'll see how far this gets us. Buckle in, grab a snack, maybe get ready to be pissed off. I don't, we'll see what the vibe is. If you would like to send me a TikTok that you think that I would have a fun reaction to, you can send it to me on TikTok. My username is Adria Panda. Just at me, bro. Or send it to me on X. Disgusting. Is X ever gonna catch on? No. Subscribe, like it up, do all that jazz. Let's just get into it. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Ah! So to start off, we have this, uh, they look like a TikTok influencer channel that has a lot of kids. And their kids are like kind of cringy and the internet kind of makes fun of them, which is kind of sad. I don't know. I feel like posting your kids on the internet to kind of set them up to be criticized is a little mean. I mean, it's funny. If I was a parent and my kid was cringe, I'd be like, have at it. Humble them a little bit. <laughs> I feel like I needed to be humbled as a cringy child. So yeah. Alex, what do you want for Christmas? A massage gun. Bruh. James, what do you want for Christmas? Nice set for culinary. Aww. Aww. Patrick, what do you want for Christmas? A nerve, nerve. Heavy sniper from Fortnite. Oh, hell no! Oh, Bruh. As somebody that plays Fortnite, pfft, no. You know when there's just like a fandom for something and they just ruin it? The thing itself is fine, but then the fan base is just like, have you been outside? A poor kid. Sweet kid, uh, just a bit of like, dude, what? And what do you want for Christmas? Yes, five. Pass the vibe check, okay. What do you want for Christmas? Reborn twins. Oh, hell no, man. Scary dolls. I hate those. What is a Pomni plush? Okay. Those are kind of creepy. Dash, what do you want for Christmas? He's cute. Yeah, and he passed the vibe check. Jordan, what do you want for Christmas? Jason, what do you want for Christmas? Xbox. Yeah. Cody, what do you want for Christmas? Digital circus stuff. What the heck is digital oh circus? Bruh. Harley, what do you want for Christmas? A unicorn toy. Merrily we fall out of line, out of line. I fall anywhere with you, I'm by your side. <laughs> if you ever cried to that audio, you are entitled to financial compensation. That one video. Merrily we fall out of line, out of line. God bless these kids. Like, you know, get, I hope they get their wishes, but it's like some, it's just like, what? The reborn doll, like that's a little frightening. I remember I followed this account years ago that it was all dedicated to reborns and the house was like so dark and it was kind of like scary. I'm not saying every person that has reborns is a psychopath, but I feel like maybe psychopaths would like reborns. <laughs> Me when I accidentally slam on the gas instead of the brakes. I just want to know how my For You page knows so much about me. Part of the reason why I am so afraid of driving and don't have my license yet at 30. Yeah, that happened to me. I remember one time I was backing my Nana's car up out of the garage when I was a teenager, like first learning how to drive. Uh, the garage wouldn't close. So I was like, oh, I'll do it all confident. And then she starts like yelling at me like, okay, that's enough. Like put the brake, like, get on the brake. And my brain shuts off and I slam on the gas and I floor it back backwards almost going into a highway. <laughs> it was like in Spongebob, like with Squidward's like, give me the wheel, Spongebob, give me the wheel. That was what was going, why did I sound like Squidward? Anyways, this has 1.4 million likes, by the way. So the girlies can't drive, let's just own it. If you're a girl and you can drive, I'm proud of you. But if you're a girl and you can't drive, my heart goes out. The 12 days of Rismus. On the 12 days of Rismus, my Rizzler gave to me. 12 Fortnite matches, 11 Rizzlers Rizzing, 10 Grimace Shakes, 9 Hours Edging, 8 Gritties Grittied, Level 7 Gyat, 6 Milli Vanillies, 5 Nights at Freddy's, 4 YouTube Shorts, 3 Phantom Taxes, 2 Upper Deckies, and a Toilet. So skibbity. On the 12 days of Rizmus. The worst part is, is that I understood 95% of that. I'm chronically online and I need to take a break. <laughs> um... Is Upper Deckies, is it like 
Willy, Millie Vanillies. I don't know what that is either, but everything else, like, unfortunately, I, I knew. Okay, so the common theme of this video is I'm responsible for my own For You page. You know, forget your Zodiac sign. I just need to see your For You page and I think I will know everything I need to know about you. So this morning I was eating my breakfast and I came across this next TikTok. Sometimes I feel it's like, oh, showing people my obsession. And sometimes it's not specific to me. It has like two likes on it and it's somebody's cat. And I'm just like, okay, next. Your cat is not my obsession, I'm sorry. But this one called me out in a cap cut edit, okay? <laughs> Me showing everyone my obsession. Baby, it is indeed raining. Um, I didn't think at 30 I would still be simping for anime men, but here we are. Uh, <laughs> I had hoped for better when uh, my frontal cortex was finished developing, but I guess like that, that just got left out. I'm a weeb. I like men that are fictional characters. What can I say? I don't know. Lately, Brandon and I have been watching Jujutsu Kaisen. Hit me up who your favorite Jujutsu Kaisen baby girl is because Chozo is probably mine. Chozo is literally like 150 years old and anemic and a cursed entity. <sighs> help. <laughs> like literally help. Like what is wrong with me? I... <laughs> Nobody tell my therapist, but also maybe I'll write that down to tell her. Now come on now. You can tell a lot by who is on someone's For You page, like famous people. Here's an example of mine. Why did you buy the knife at Walmart? I did not buy Gypsy it. Gypsy Rose. Whose idea was it to kill your mother? Mine. Beep, beep, beep. Is that bleep? Is that you talking to me? Is that deep? Okay, period. Um, <laughs> I'm on Gypsy Rose TikTok. Okay, so this, I'm afraid to click on this. I did not watch the whole thing. I, I started to watch it and I'm like, I'm saving this, okay? The thumbnail says, this is like a post somebody put on the internet. Having diarrhea is my favorite thing in the world. Some people have absolutely zero regard for the digital footprint. Let's hear them out, I guess. Having diarrhea is my favorite thing in the entire world. Yes, that is right. I love to have diarrhea. One of my favorite things to do is take a laxative on weekends when I have absolutely nothing to do and I know I'll be at the house all day. There are so many aspects of it that make it one of the best experiences. The first aspect I love is the rush. Just going about my business and then the all rush. of a sudden I know I might poop my pants. That it is time to get on a toilet right now and nothing else matters. It's an adrenaline rush when the stomach starts to gurgle and you know you can't stop what's about to happen. That I am totally at the mercy of my bowels. The second is simply the feeling. I love the feeling of relief I get in my stomach, the feeling of it rushing out of my butt. The comments on there uh, apparently reached the right audience. Everyone's like, this is so real. Recently, I had food poisoning from Wawa. I just had like a turkey hoagie from Wawa and like immediately after my stomach was upset, a severe wave of nausea came over me. I was just on the toilet, girl. I will say afterward, I, did, I felt a lot better. I felt de-bloated. I was like, okay work but i do not enjoy that at all why am i saying this I, I i was just talking about the digital footprint and now like doesn't even apply to me i think we've all been there though but i do not crave that feeling i actually am like terrified of that feeling i also have like really bad emetophobia so <laughs> to say it's your favorite thing in the entire world i think you need to have better experiences the thumbnail says red flag girl let's check this out she is thin but she's a single mom i'm okay with that thing I love kids. But she is taller than you. My ten. <laughs> she is ten, but she doesn't have university degree. What's the problem? Ten. She's <laughs> from different country. Yeah, I don't mind the nationalities. Ten. She doesn't speak any of your languages. You mean English and Japanese? I have a body language. <laughs> ten. Your mom doesn't like her. But I love her. Ten. She's on long distance relationship. Oh, let's do video chat every day. Ten. She has no job and no money. I will work harder and harder. Don't worry. Ten. Ah, so. I have the soul. She is ten, but she keeps friendship with your ex. My ex? Yeah. Ten. <laughs> she keeps I literally love him. He's so sweet. Oh, let's share it. <laughs> she is very famous. I wanna be famous too. Ten. <laughs> she is a red flag girl. What do you mean, red flag girl? <laughs> what do you mean, a red flag girl? He's like, I don't even know what that means. Oh my gosh, that dude is just so pure. Absolute angel, 10 out of 10. I, I hope he finds a lady because he's an absolute doll. He gave me the Name a woman, Sydney Sweeney. 
Absolutely not. Absolutely not. What the? Girl, make sure that shit closed. Ain't nobody giggling but you. Ain't shit funny in the world right now. <laughs> Ain't shit funny in the world right now, and you over here giggling while y'all checking this box. Literally, like, I don't even understand the context of that video. Like, just like... And also, why is your cereal in a giant tub? Like... Sometimes the human race does things and I just literally don't understand. Also, sometimes I think I'm on the wrong side of TikTok and then the stitch pops up and I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, this looks like a Reddit post. All right, so it says, my mother-in-law doesn't believe my daughter can be allergic to anything and almost unalives her and now she's threatening to off herself. Oh, this I gotta see. This my three-year-old daughter has several severe food allergies. Peanuts and eggs are the worst. She also can't have dairy or bananas. Mother-in-law is super obsessed with my daughter. This is our only child and Mills' only grandchild, so I try to be understanding. I don't say anything about it when oh. mother-in-law buys $300 dresses that my daughter will only wear once. I've encouraged a relationship between them. I've let mother-in-law have her way on holidays. I've never actually left them alone, though. I can't explain exactly, but it just didn't feel right. Mother-in-law hasn't pushed for alone time like I've read about here. She offered to babysit but let it go when we declined. Mother-in-law has always doubted my daughter's allergies. She's insisted that her princess of a granddaughter could never have something wrong with her. However, she's never tested to see if it's true. Until today. Mother-in-law was overplaying dress up with my daughter. I had a horrible headache so I asked mother-in-law to watch my daughter so I could lie down for an hour. I'm scared. She agreed. 20 minutes later I'm woken up to mother-in-law shrieking that there's something wrong with the baby. I go running to daughter's room and she's gasping for breath and her lips are turning blue. I scream at mother-in-law to call 911 and use an EpiPen on my daughter. My daughter was able to take a deep breath and I noticed she smelled like banana. The paramedics show up, we live Anna a mile from a fire station, start in four and give daughter meds so she can breathe. I tell one of the paramedics that mother-in-law fed my daughter something. He found part of a cookie on the floor. He confronts mother-in-law who confesses she gave my daughter a peanut butter banana cookie but she didn't know it would hurt her. I text my husband and ride to the hospital with daughter. They admitted her for observation oh my and my gosh. husband met us there. Mother-in-law called him wailing about how she was just trying to show us nothing is wrong with daughter. We're just too paranoid and have such odd ideas about daughter's health. We eat healthy and daughter has received all the vaccines she can have. Oh, and we use sunblock. So odd, right? That female dog admitted to my husband that oh she's my been gosh, why? cookies for more than a year. She bakes a huge batch and freezes them. She puts one in her purse every time she sees daughter just in case she gets a chance to slip it to her. I can't even wrap my head around this. Daughter is asking when mother-in-law is going to come see her. She wants to show oh! her pretty bracelet, right hospital now. band with stickers on it. I'm so devastated right now. I never suspected mother-in-law would do something like this. There's a lot to unpack here. That woman just sounds straight up crazy, uh, narcissistic, abusive, controlling, the literal poisoning of the child on purpose, hello. And just that poor sweet granddaughter like wondering when she's gonna see her grandmother again, like, like that poor thing, like she literally poisoned you and she's just like, oh, when am I gonna see my grandmother again? It's probably a good thing I'm not a parent because literally if that were me, I feel like I would actually, I, I would be the one to end up in prison. Hello. And as somebody that has food allergies, right? If somebody knowingly fed me something that they knew I was allergic to just to see what would happen, I would never speak to them again. Like quite honestly, if it was an accident, that's one thing. Oh, look, like, look, let's see if she's actually allergic to it. Like you are a literal ass if you do that. Like that is insane. Stop it, get some help. Where is this grandmother at? Because I'm gonna throw fists. <laughs> Disgusting behavior. Are roles that a man plays that are different than a woman plays and roles that a woman plays are different than a man plays. And that's natural, that's okay. here in us. And oh, she looks dead inside. That is one of the only keys to a man's heart. When's the last time you cooked a meal? <gasps> I can't go back to who I was when I was 20. I don't believe that that's a female chore to keep a husband happy. So I don't want to perpetuate that. And if I loved cooking and it was met with like, hey, I love that you love cooking. Like this means a lot to me, thanks. But you know, you don't have to do this all the time. Like I can pitch in or whatever. If it was met with that, I think I would love cooking. But the way it's been presented to me is if you don't do this, I love you less. <gasps> I don't want that kind of relationship. 
Okay, I don't know what show this is from. Let me see. The Plath family. Welcome to Plathville TLC. First of all, that poor woman, she seemed like dead inside. Like, honestly, she seemed devastated. Something that I recently saw this online and it was like, some women get jealous when they see their man being nice to another woman because the only time they are nice to women is when they're attracted to them. And that was like the code cracked. I don't get jealous when my husband is nice to other women because his love for me does not have terms and conditions attached to it. Her having to work for his love and his support and, oh, if I don't cook for you, you love me less, that is just so beyond. That is not what marriage is. That That is just quite literally not what marriage is. I've recently begun cooking more. I was never really much of a cook. Um, Brandon personally enjoys cooking more. He took culinary in school. He's he's always enjoyed cooking. So like that for him is like, it's almost like a love language. Like when he cooks for people, that is like an expression of love. And I cook, he expresses gratitude and like, thank you for doing this and all that. But like when I don't, he doesn't take anything away. And I cannot stand relationships where it's, well, I only love you if you do this. Oh, if you don't do this for me, I love you less. Well, I'm gonna be mad at you if you don't do this. Oh, ugh. I hope that woman gets out of that. I, can y'all update me if you watch that show? <laughs> I may need to watch that because, girl, what? Oh, Brandon sent me some TikToks, let's see. Woman claims she can create a force field around her. Hashtag Karen, oh, this ought to be good. <laughs> Is this real though? Chat, is this real? <laughs> How'd that force field work out for you, girl? Um, what? <laughs> that was like, I was, I was recently watching a video on cults and there was this one cult where they like thought they could levitate and they're literally like sitting like pretzel style on the floor and like just like standing on their hands. I'm like, babe, that's not levitating. <laughs> that's not what levitating is. <laughs> I wish I could be this delusional to think that there's a force field around me. Um, I could have used that in my germophobia during COVID. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would love to be that delusional. Brandon also sent me, got the munchies and ate four pizzas. Anyways, uh, let's see. Got munchies and ate four pizzas. Gary, I'm dead. You're not I'm dead. dead. You're not dead. You are not dead, okay? Good. Get you inside, mate. Oh my gosh, he's like panicking. 20 years. Okay, so it's not your first row no. date. Okay, all right. I'm blocked, I'm blocked yep. up, dude. And how do you know that you're blocked? Can you feel it? Yeah, and I'm getting dizzy spells, like hard, hardcore oh, no. dizzy spells. Hardcore, because yes, you're breathing hardcore. Because when you give me mouth to mouth, it, you, you, won't, you won't unblock it. Like, you I'm know? not gonna. I'm, I can tell you right now. I'm not giving you mouth to mouth. Oh. No. <laughs> yeah, you suck, suck it. Stop out. Uh, the pizza. The yeah. Four, yeah. I'm not sucking anything out. <laughs> how, well, how would the hospital do yeah. it? They don't need to do it. They don't need. To. You're gonna find that this pizza is gonna go through you, and you're gonna have an amazing shit tomorrow. And these four pizzas are gonna be out of your life. And they're gonna go through the right way and they're not gonna come up the wrong way. The hospital will be able to take care of you. I'm dead. In a metaphobia dream. Not dead. You are oh my not gosh. dead. Okay? Good. Good. I kind of feel bad for him though. It's hilarious, but like also at the same time, like that's like very scary. That EMT was like trying not to lose it. Because <laughs> it's hilarious. When this chicken sandwich is in my face, yes, being gay is a sin. <laughs> it's a sin. It's not right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Listen, Chick-fil-A could hate me by name and I'd still eat there. Give me those tendies, girl. Okay, so the viral TikTok of the day, this dude's wedding vows. This recently went viral. It's been all over the internet. Let's talk about it. I promise to smack ass every chance I get. <clears throat> That's all I got. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. Are you sure? I didn't write nothing down. That's what you're going out with? That's what I'm going right, with. Cool. We've made it this long. That was his vows. I promise to smack ass. 
It's every chance I get. Oh, what are the comments on this? I would probably cry he didn't care enough about her to write vows. Notice how no one else is laughing besides him. What? Even the officiant tried to help out. So I got married in 2022. Leading up to the wedding, Brandon and I were like preparing our own vows. And I remember like even asking him like, oh, did you write your vows yet? And he's like, oh yeah, like I'm working on it and all that. So we were like communicating with the wedding preparation and stuff and like what we were doing and like the stuff that we had ready to go and you know, all that. And so it's a little odd to me that she didn't know that he didn't write anything. I I mean, maybe not that it's a woman's job to like keep tabs on the dude, but like you kind of do. You kind of just like subconsciously do. I would have been shocked if Brandon would have showed up with nothing, with like absolutely nothing. And I can't imagine embarrassing your spouse like this. Like, here's the thing. That is the one day where you should be serious. And to this day, that was like the most serious I've ever seen Brandon in my like experience. Like Brandon's not a very serious person. I understand like, yeah, huh, we can, we can joke and stuff like that. This is kind of what the reception's for. Like, you know, like when they do like the whole like pulling the garter off thing and like maybe the cake in the face, which I personally am not a fan of either, but it's like, there's a time and a place for like jokes and like fun with weddings. This, this is not it. And you could, you could do something funny without completely just fumbling the entire ball. Come on. People were like, why didn't she walk away? Why didn't she say something I would have left? Well, personally, yes, I would have left as well. But also I would not have been standing at the altar with a guy that would embarrass me like this. I don't want to blame her, but at the same time, you get what you put up with. You know, he's like, we've made it this long, right? So I think there are people that put up with horrible partners because that is all they know. You know, maybe you grew up in like not such a great environment. So staying in that familiar chaos and that feeling of inadequacy, like that is familiar to you. So you don't see the other side of like, I deserve better. A lot of people can't even recognize that. So, you know, maybe she's never been in a truly loving, happy, healthy, respectful relationship. But maybe from the reaction of the internet, maybe she'll like pick up on it. But, you know, at the same time, if she's allowing this and putting up with this, like maybe she doesn't see a problem, which it could not be me. She didn't really seem that surprised. Maybe she was just like trying not to cry. Who knows? You know, the fight, flight, or freeze. Maybe she just froze. I really do feel bad. Like imagine if that was a complete shock. Imagine if she did not know he was anything like this, how shocking that would have been. But a great guy wouldn't do this. That's the thing. Or like the guys that write help me on the back of their vows. Brandon was literally crying. He like couldn't even get through his vows because he was crying. And if that's not the energy that you get on your wedding day. Throw the entire man in the trash. <laughs> Besides, if I wanted to hear from an asshole, I would have farted. While we're on that, let's end it with this. Uh, this thumbnail says, men prefer debt-free virgins without tattoos. This is by the transformed wife. Let's hear her out. Hi. Years ago, I published a post called, men prefer debt-free virgins without tattoos. It went absolutely viral international. It was on Good Morning America and radio shows all over. The problem was that I was ridiculous. by Christian, Christian women. Men overwhelmingly supported me. In fact, there were many polls done after that to see if men actually did, did prefer debt-free virgins without tattoos. Overwhelmingly, men voted yes. They absolutely do prefer debt-free virgins without tattoos. Why would they want a woman who was deeply into debt to marry? And why would they want a woman who was indoctrinated into feminism in the colleges that teaches them to be sexually promiscuous? Well, not just the colleges, Hollywood, every everything in our culture promotes this and encourages this of women, feminism especially. This was their goal to get women out of their homes and stop having babies. So women go to college, spend tons of amount of money, have a career during their most youthful, fertile years when they should be building a family, being married, bearing children, and guiding a home, but they've fallen for the feminist agenda. So very few men are marrying anymore. And you've seen that a lot of men 
don't feel like they can find a woman because they're all feminists. They all have deep amount of debt. They've slept around with a lot of guys. And if you've slept around with a lot of guys before marriage, the chances of you continuing on after marriage are huge unless you repent, believe in Jesus Christ, and are transformed and are very committed to your vows that you made to your husband. And then what about tattoos? Tattoos get gray and ugly as you get old. The ink in tattoos is very toxic to your body and to your immune system. So I don't recommend them at all. And men much prefer women without tattoos. It makes the beautiful flesh that God created us with ugly, especially as it ages and gets wrinkled and gray and just... So men absolutely prefer debt-free virgins without tattoos. So the young women who are who are who have no debt, have no tattoos, haven't slept around, this blog post was for them. The women who have all these things, there is forgiveness in Christ and redemption. And But doesn't mean you are not going to suffer the consequences of your sin while on this earth. But women, he can transform you and you can still have great marriages. But I encourage those young women to not do any of those things. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Okay, I'm done. I, I, I can't do anymore. So men prefer women without any life experience or personalities. Got it. If your preference is for somebody without tattoos, that's completely your preference. Also, if y'all get married, you'll have debt together. Cars, houses, hospital bills from bearing those children that you should be bearing. Oh, so you will accumulate debt together, so that I don't understand. And also the fixation on a virgin is kind of weird. How about you want a woman that is a kind, loving, respectful, fun partner that enriches your life? Like why the focus on stuff that's so trivial, like superficial? I personally want a cursed spirit man who's 150 years old. Is that is that asking too much? <laughs> And I also don't really get the like, oh, I prefer people that are like this category. For me, it's always been like a case by case thing. Like, oh, would you ever date someone of this category? It's like, well, I don't know. Like I've never been in that scenario, right? Cross bridges when you come to them because you may limit yourself. So I, I'm done. Um, I actually have therapy in nine minutes. So <laughs> and Lord knows I need it now. <laughs> Send me your cringy TikToks if you would like me to do more of these. I love how this video started off kind of funny and then it ended with me just like being so frustrated. <laughs> Anyways, let me know your thoughts down below. I love all you debt-free virgins with no tattoos. I will see you guys again real soon. Until then, panda hugs, love you guys. Don't accumulate debt, I guess. Bye. This is my 13th reason, this, this, this is it. This could be my last video because this, I don't know if I can do any more. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>